Hey, hey future York, York students. students! I'm Sidel. And I'm Nitha. And welcome to the Faculty of Liberal Arts and Professional Studies program chat series. We want you to know that here in LAMPS you will study what you love and learn what you need. In this chat you'll be hearing from future professors as well as current students about the program. What it has to offer you like internship opportunities. And what your first year in the program may look like. All right, should we get started? Yeah, let's get started. Enjoy everybody. Hi everyone, welcome to our Liberal Arts and Professional Studies program chat. Today, we're going to be talking about one of our most popular programs, and that is our program in criminology. Before we get started with that conversation, I'd like to start by recognizing the land that York University sits on. This meeting is virtual, and because of that, we are not all actually gathered in the same space. York's land acknowledgement might not represent the territory that you are currently on, and I would ask that if that is the case, that you each take the responsibility to acknowledge the traditional territory that you are on and its current treaty holders. As a member of York University, I recognize that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations. The area known as Takranto has been taken care of by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron-Wendat, and the Métis. It is now home to many Indigenous peoples. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lake region. Now I'd like to introduce a very special guest that we have with us here today. Uh, Professor Law is here with us from the Criminology Department to talk a little bit more about criminology here at York University. Good morning, Professor Law. Good morning. My name is Tulia Law. I'm the coordinator of the criminology program, and I've also been teaching in the criminology program for the past few years. My area of study is gender and crime. I look particularly at the deviantization and criminalization of women and how they work in the sex industry. And I teach a number of courses in criminology at the third and fourth year levels. This year, I'm teaching politics of crime prevention, youth crime, and a new course called Critical Victimology. So I'm happy to be talking to you today about our criminology program at York. Uh, I'm ready to bring up my slides now. So one thing you might be wondering is why criminology at York? So just a few things to start off with about our program. Like university, the criminology program is interdisciplinary. That means that our courses draw from different perspectives and theories and disciplines. So various theories in criminology and other disciplines like sociology, communication studies, history, feminist and gender studies, human rights and equity studies, surveillance studies, and international development studies. And you'll find that many faculty in our program have educational and research backgrounds in these various fields as well. So we're quite an interdisciplinary program. This also has practical implications for what you'll be doing in your university career. So this means that there are requirements in criminology to take courses in our program, our core courses, as well as electives from other disciplines, including outside of the social science department where we are housed to fulfill your degree requirements. Something else you might also be thinking is what is criminology, right? This is, of course, an important question to be wondering about. So some of the key questions that we grapple with in criminology are things like why people commit crime, right? What are the personal and social reasons why they might get involved in a criminalized activity, uh, as well as what our pat current patterns of crime, right? What kinds of things are happening right now? Are these the same kinds of things that we might assume by reading in the news? Or is there something else really going on when we look at what people are actually doing? We also look at 
what the criminal justice system does, right? How we treat people who have committed crimes in Canada and how it's going, if it's working, right? So that brings us to questions like are mandatory minimum sentences an effective response to crime? Getting into the particular research interests of our faculty, but also some important other contemporary issues. We also look at the overlap of technology and crime. So looking, for example, at how technology such as the internet um, influences crime. We also look at crimes that people might not necessarily think of as crime, right? We might think of crime generally as something happening on the street, you know, as someone dangerous over there who might be looking to do something violent to us. We don't necessarily think Again, especially in the news, if we're reading the news about white collar crime, right? about corporate crime. So this is something we pay attention to and look into in the courses as well in the program. What are the costs and consequences of corporate and white collar crime? We, it's also, of course, important to look at the ways in which people are perceived and deviantized and criminalized. And this brings us to this last question in our slide, which is considered in various ways in our different courses, which is what is the relationship between race, gender, class, crime, and victimization, right? How do all of these ways in which people are perceived affect their experiences and their treatment either as offenders or victims in the criminal justice system. So these are some of the questions that we grapple with in criminology, again, from an interdisciplinary as well as a critical perspective. So critical perspective means that we question the framings that are received, that are communicated through news about crime and common sense assumptions about who does it. So many of these questions are, are attended to in our courses, right? So looking at our courses at a glance, we have courses touching on white collar crime and crimes against the environment, on youth crime and crime prevention, on surveillance, on the criminalization of immigration and borders, sometimes called crimmigration. We also have courses looking into the representation of crime in popular culture. Um, and of course, we look into various aspects of the criminal justice system in various courses. And really, we could say this is a continuing theme throughout the degree where we really try to get students an understanding of the implications of the laws and particularly criminal laws in Canada, why this is important to both people involved in the criminal justice system and why it should be important to you and me. We have a diverse range of faculty in our program. Um, some people are involved in community-based or inclusive research. Some people look at, for example, surveillance technology and practices or the regulation of the internet, uh, international policing, crime, and international development in war-torn countries. So we have quite a range of faculty who draw on their research to inject fresh research and ideas into courses in interesting ways. And so in the first couple of years, the courses are, there's, there's fewer courses, they're compulsory. As you get into third and fourth year, you can choose more specifically to learn from faculty about their specific issues as courses get more specialized and smaller.
Um, in terms of our approach to teaching and learning, this is something that faculty have different styles about. So there's various ways in which faculty um, approach their courses. Blended courses is something that we might be doing in a couple more courses in the coming years, given what we've learned in the pandemic about blended approaches and virtual teaching, but we're also excited to be coming back to teaching in person um, in terms of what the classroom looks like. Faculty will do different things, including small and large group discussions, various kinds of activities to flesh out and really get into concepts. Um, small research activities in classes. Um, there's also different kinds of assignments you might be doing in various classes, including various kinds of research projects on topics related to the class and things that you choose as well, right? So part of our goal in the program is to really equip you not only to think critically, but to know how to research things, right? Uh, to be critical of how research is done and also to know how to undertake it yourself in terms of you know what is scholarly literature how do you get it through the library um, what kinds of things should you be drawing on and doing to make a good paper Criminology is also housed in the Department of Social Science. So we're a program that is housed in a larger department that has a lot of, of other programs going on. So something that some of our students do is they choose to do a double major or a major minor program. And sometimes they combine this with other programs in the department, right? So someone might, for example, do a major in criminology and a minor in interdisciplinary social science or urban studies or African studies or law and society. Students also choose, can also choose to do a double major or a major minor by pairing criminology with something outside of the Department of Social Science. So a popular choice there is um, psychology, sometimes people also do sociology or human rights and equity studies. So there's various combinations that you can make should you want to do a second major in a double major context or a minor in a, ma a major minor context. So this is what that would look like, right? So a single major, you have 54 criminology credits that you need to take. So you'd be taking more upper year courses in criminology and you have more electives, right? You have a little bit more free choice there. So that might be an option you wanna take if you want a more diverse selection of courses that make up your university degree. For double major and major minor options, you'll have a few less credits in criminology, 48. And then you will have to also adhere to the requirements of your other program, right? So there's 42 credits you need to get in a second major, but you'll also have to get information from them about how to do that. You'll also notice throughout all of these options, there's something called general education, right? That is something that is part of York's interdisciplinary approach. So those are programs or those are courses in social science, but also, also natural science and humanities at the first and second year level that give you a good overview of what different kinds of disciplines offer, as well as some skills in writing, right? There's longer tutorials in, the, in some of those courses. So that really allows you to develop those writing and research skills. In terms of getting into criminology, um, 
you can see our requirements here. Um, so you'll need some particular credits from grade 12, including grade 12 U English. Since criminology is a popular program, over the past two years, we've been finding that for admission to criminology at York, students need an average of, of 80% or higher. Since criminology is an honors program, you'll also have to make sure that you do the work to maintain your grades to stay at the honors level. Um, in particular, this means that um, our first year course has a requirement of 70% or above, right? So, so that's very important to get that grade in our one first year course. It's the only criminology course you'll be taking in first year, but it's also very important to focus on. So it, should you not get that 70% in introduction to criminology, you can get another chance to take it. If you get a C plus, right? So just below 70, you will automatically be allowed to retake it. If you get lower than a C plus, then you'll have to talk to me, the criminology program coordinator about how you plan on improving that grade. You'll also have to generally keep your average at C plus or above to maintain honor standing throughout the program. So this is something that is, is doable if you commit yourself to your schoolwork. Um, and this is always easier if you get to know people and make friends in the program, right? Then you can have people to study with. A good way to do that is by joining the Criminology Society, right, our student group in the program. They offer study sessions and various events throughout the year. Another good way to maintain your average is to, to pick courses that you really like, right? So the first few years of criminology, I'll just go here. Yeah, the first year of, of criminology, there's only the one mandatory course Right, so then you want to choose electives and general education courses that you are really interested in. An important part of that is, is registering as soon as you can, you know, not doing that late so that you get a good selection of courses. Um, then in second year, as you see here, there are a few more courses. So you learn the basics in introduction to criminology, right? So I'll just go back to this slide here. Um, so introduction to criminology is really, it gives you a survey or an overview of what the field of criminology is all about. So it goes over things like, you know, how we punish people, a little bit about how the criminal justice system works. It also talks about issues such as gender and racialization and crime with regard to particular topics, um, including things like the war on drugs and uh, issues in policing practices that we've heard about in the news over the past few years. So CRIM 1650, Introduction to Criminology, is a very important course. It's also a prerequisite to all of our other courses, so it is something that is important to take in, in the first year. Um, that course also covers other big topics in criminology, like uh, organized crime, corporate crime, and representations of crime in the media, topics that are then developed further in our third and fourth year courses. So in second year is when you begin to get into criminology and its various facets in a little bit more detail. So there's a full year course that is specifically about theories of criminology, right? And theories of criminology, students learn about what criminology is, you know, what people have theorized in terms of why people commit crime. And this is something we call etiology in criminology. 
as well as in more recent theories, how social factors contribute to the reasons people commit crime. So theories of criminology runs the whole gamut from the beginning of criminology to the present. Our other, another course in second year is called criminal justice system. And this is just how the criminal justice system works. So very important course in terms of being a foundation upon which subsequent courses will build because they will assume that you have become familiar with how the criminal justice system works in that second year course, right? That means that, you know, it looks at what happens from when someone interacts with the police all the way through to when they are released from prison. Our third second year course, Criminological Research Methods, gives students an introduction to how people do research, right? Looking at various different kinds of, of methods, um, drawing again from various disciplines that people use to undertake research in broadly the field of criminology and starting to give people a little bit of a critical perspective, right? So what questions might we ask so that we can assess whether a study or an article or something that we are reading is good, right? Was it done well? Was it done rigorously? Is this good research? This is the kind of thing that, you know, the kinds of questions that we begin to ask and think about with that course. Then in the third and fourth year, what we get more specific as classes get smaller, right? So that there's a variety of courses in third year. Um, you only have to take four courses or 12 credits out of these third year courses. And then in fourth year, there's the courses get even smaller. There are 25 person courses. And this is a chance for you to really engage with other students, you know, your peers and the professors in much more of a discussion. So these are taught in seminar format, which means that they're much more student led. They're much more, there's much more participation, right? You know, so it's the chance to apply everything you've learned and, and really get into the readings and the topics that you will be reading about and thinking about each week in those courses. Fourth year is also the time where students are al allowed much more leeway in terms of the projects that they're doing right now that you've learned in fourth year, you know, by fourth year, how to write an essay and do a research project. The research projects you do for fourth year are, are much more um, likely to be something that you are thinking about and planning yourself and taking your own direction in within the topic area of that course. So I know that in my fourth year courses, students have done some really interesting papers. Some of the most interesting ones have been media analyses, right? So how is crime represented, for example, on a season of a TV show or on um, on the news, one student did a really interesting paper about how men's rights activists talk on Reddit, right? And what was going on there in terms of um, what they were saying about gender, how they were performing gender and reproducing stereotypes. So very interesting stuff going on there that you can be doing in fourth year. Like I was saying earlier, something that is a very important resource for students in our criminology program is the Criminology Society at York, the CSY. This is our student group that is quite active and has a number of events every year. And they've actually even managed to maintain being active during the pandemic. But of course, we're all looking forward to being more in person next year. So. Typically, the Criminology Society at York has a number of academic events, including study sessions and study groups 
They also host writing workshops. Usually they also have a number of professional development related events, right? So events you might want to go to, to if you want to volunteer or learn about what jobs are available out there. Uh, sometimes this involves a policing event where they get people from the police service to come and talk about their jobs. They also have had events with lawyers. Um, and indeed, criminology graduates often go on to become involved in various capacities in uh, law enforcement and the criminal justice system, right? People go on to sometimes to law school or to graduate school as well, or to social work kinds of jobs. So these are the kinds of jobs and professionals that you will learn about and meet if you go to these professional development and networking events that are put on by the CSY. Um, they've also had field trips. So this is something that you can join their group. I believe they have a Facebook group to learn more about um, once you decide to come to York. Another exciting thing that we have going on at York for students and especially for students who are interested in developing their writing skills towards perhaps going to grad school is the York University Criminological Review. So there's been a new edition that's been put out this year. What this is, is a scholarly journal, right? It's a scholarly journal featuring papers, research papers by undergraduate students in the program. So it's like the journals that we publish in as professors, but it's for undergraduate students. There's a really good review process goes up that goes on with that journal that is very much like the professional peer review process that, that we as scholars and professors participate in to get our work published. So it's really something that I, I recommend if people want to have that experience of what it's like to submit to a journal, then I, I highly recommend that, that you submit your research papers to the York University Criminological Review. Like I was saying before, many of our students go on to work in law enforcement in some capacity or as lawyers. Uh, a recent panel of York graduates featured people working in social work in alternative sanctions, right? So a justice program for youth in conflict with the law. Uh, one of them was a Crown lawyer. And we also have people go on to work in various capacities in law enforcement. I know some of my former students are in those kinds of jobs. Another important option with a criminology degree that I encourage students to consider, especially because I teach a course in fourth year called criminal justice policy, where we really get into policy analysis, is policy work, right? Working as someone in government, working on revising and developing new policies that are related to criminal justice is something that is, is really important and could really make a difference um, and is something that many students are interested in. A panelist that I met who was a graduate of York also was involved in fraud investigation. So this is something that some people do. I believe this person was working for a bank. Um, there's also other kinds of careers that might not appear directly related to criminology, but where you can certainly apply this degree. Um, so in various capacities, so you might consider working in immigration or journalism or social work um, or something more community oriented. So not only like alternative sanctions for youth, but also 
something like conflict mediation, which might be with people of various ages, depending on the kind of organization that you're working with. So there's a lot of interesting careers that people go on to with criminology. Um, and I think that we really equip them to do that through the critical thinking skills that we focus on in the program. So just to end with a couple of resources, um, you can reach me at this email address here or at crimpc at yorku.ca. And then our criminology program assistant would, who knows a lot about the requirements of the program and registration and all that stuff. Her name is Pamela Lamb and you can reach her at crimprobe at yorku.ca. So I hope that you consider York as an option um, in choosing your schools. And I really think that our criminology program is an excellent choice that you will enjoy when you get here. So that's all for me. Fantastic, Professor Law. Thank you so much for that overview of the program. I was wondering if we could just talk a little bit more about some of the things you covered, but maybe uh, broaden the depth just a little bit. Um, I was really interesting um, hearing about some of your interests, and I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about um, some, of, some of the areas that faculty members uh, look at and some of the faculty members that our students could be working with when they come to the criminology program. Sure. So just thinking about people who have recently published research that is featured on our website. Um, one of our professors is Professor Natasha Tusikoff, who writes about internet regulation. So, you know, how, um, for example, one of her latest papers that her and I were talking about the other day was on the censorship and its implications of, um, adult advertising on the internet, right? So there's these new anti-trafficking laws in the US that are very far reaching. They're meant to curb sex trafficking, but in fact, their effect isn't that at all. It's just to censor people and sometimes to cut off the ability to communicate of people who work in the sex industry who are not trafficked, but rather just work there as, you know, that's the job that they have. She also does a lot of other research about regulation of various other facets of the internet. Um, I was interested in that because there's some overlap with my research there on the sex industry. One of our newer professors, Jessica Bramo, researches about youth in conflict with the law. And she does a lot of community oriented work with that. So she, because she's relatively new, she's someone that I encourage students to get to know. And in fact, they will be getting to know her because she'll, she's teaching one of our second year courses that all the students has to take, which is criminal justice system. Another one of our professors, Osgun Topak, researches surveillance in authoritarian regimes. So a lot of his work is in and around Turkey and the Middle East. He does interview-based research about how people experience these regimes and surveillance and some theoretical work around surveillance as well. You know, it's really fabulous to hear about the interdisciplinarity of this program. Um, and it's one of the things uh, we do really well here in the faculty. Uh, and I was really pleased uh, to see the encouragement for students to pick up double majors and major minors, um, because I think that's a really powerful way to bring other ideas mm -hmm. uh, into your study of criminology. Um, but when we look at the study of criminology generally, I think a lot of students get confused about um, what the program of criminology is here at York University. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk about uh, one um, 
how our program compares to other programs around uh, the province or even uh, on the, uh, the national scene in terms of how we approach criminology and how that might differ from something uh, like um, forensics or criminalistic? I would say, so I think the first thing to note in that is what criminology is not, right? So criminology is not forensic science. We are a social science, right? This, so like the department that we are in, we are a social science. We are not um, a physical science or a natural science, right? So this means that you will not be in a lab testing stuff like you see on CSI or all of those other crime shows on TV. Instead, we talk about the social conditions that engender crime and the social context that crime unfolds in, right? This is why we use words like criminalization and deviantization, right? So how it's about how social perceptions affect what people do and what happens to them after they commit a criminalized activity. So if we're talking at all about CSI in the program, in the courses, we're gonna be talking about how it represents crime. So that's something, and we actually do talk about that quite a bit in criminology is what are popular representations of crime? You know, what is entertainment media and news media about crime? What is that saying, right? What is that saying about our values and understandings as a society and how that shapes our responses to crime and what we think we should do in regard to crime and offenders? So yes, we are not, there are no test tubes or lab coats involved in, in criminology. And, and when we look at um, this program in terms of a social, social science-based criminology program, and we look at other programs that might offer similar uh, criminology programs, is there something about uh, our program here at York uh, that sets it apart? I would say that the interdisciplinary aspect of criminology at York is something that sets it apart. Other programs at other institutions might be more focused on criminology and they're not, they won't be housed in an interdisciplinary context in the same way. So that, you know, if you look at their, some of the requirements of our degree, like the general education requirements where students are required to take courses in humanities and natural science. I think that really rounds out students' um, breadth of knowledge in an important way. I think this contributes to how people think about things and the solutions, you know, it informs the solutions that they arrive at and the strategies that they take. Um, so I think it really rounds out their critical thinking in a nice way. As part of that, some of our faculty are cross-appointed to other programs as well. So for example, Professor Mohamed Sese is cross-appointed between criminology and international development studies. So that not only reflects his research, it also informs his teaching. So he's teaching a third year course, a third year seminar. It's a bit of a special new thing that we're doing a smaller course at the third year level. Um, about crime and international development. So that's a unique perspective that he brings from his interdisciplinary background. And other professors have interdisciplinary backgrounds that they apply in criminology, particularly, even though they're not cross-appointed. So I think there's that interdisciplinary element really enriches what we cover and how we think about things at York. And I think that the opportunity it provides for students uh, can be quite uh, substantial. Uh, I know that working with students who have been in the criminology program and had added double majors, I'm always impressed with what they find. I mean, we see psychology, sure, as a, as a common minor for people mm -hmm. who are interested in abnormal behavior, 
But we also see interesting combinations like anthropology, mm-hmm. um, where they're interested in sort of the the innate roots of uh, criminalization uh, and and sort of taking that story from a modern context into historical ones. Um, so it always makes for fascinating uh, conversations, I think, uh, with our students. Um, one thing I do get asked a lot is, you may have noticed our criminology students are some of the highest achievers. Um, they tend to be, uh, you know, always looking for um, a way to improve. Um, and we get asked constantly if you have any uh, recommendations for books that they could read over the summer. They've been admitted to a criminology program or they're waiting to hear back and they're looking to uh, prepare themselves. What kind of recommendation would you have about things they, they might read about? So my recommendation actually isn't a book. It's actually something that I would hope that you already do. But if you don't, I definitely encourage you to do it, which is reading the news. The news is something we talk a lot about in criminology, right? It's It tells you, I mean, the news, there's that maxim, if it bleeds, it leads, right? So the news is often about crime. And what I would encourage you to do in preparation for coming to the criminology program in the fall is to read the no, the news with a critical eye, right? Think about, you know, what is being covered? How is it being talked about? Who is being talked about, right? Are they talking about people of different racial backgrounds in different ways? You know, are they talking about victimization in a particular way um, for some people and not others? Are they our news articles presenting some people who haven't yet been charged as likely guilty or likely innocent, right? There's, we think of the news as objective, but there's, the news reflects common sense understandings and, and social values and politics, right? So there's a lot going on there in that representation of crime and it's something that we encourage people to think critically about. It's also important to know what is going on with regard to laws that are changing, right? This is also a topic of the news, what's happening with government. Um, So that's something that is very important to keep on top of in criminology. So really keeping up with the news is something that will really help you out in criminology and, and get you starting to think critically about the kinds of issues that we'll be engaging with in the program. Oh, fantastic. You know, I, I said at the start of this video that it is one of our more popular programs, and I hope uh, as we've discussed it, you can see why. Uh, a really uh, remarkable and fascinating topic. And thank you, Professor Law, for taking us through it and uh, introducing us to York University's criminology program. Hope you enjoyed the program chat, everyone. If you have any questions about our LNPS programs, be sure to visit our website to learn more. And make sure to stay in touch with us for a chance to win a $100 gift card at the York Bookstore. The link to our website is in the description box below. You can also send your questions to us, the LNPS student recruitment team. We'd love to hear from you, so send us an email at goyork at yorku.ca. And we look forward to seeing you all on campus next year. Bye! Bye!